here. So thankful that you're here today. I know we were here last night at prayer, um, but I know um, not everyone was able to be here, but we are so thankful to be back, um, be back in, in, in church, be back in town. Uh, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Would you stand as we do? Father, we're so thankful. We're so thankful to be able to come into your presence, God, to hear your word, Lord, to learn of you, God, to that, that Lord, that as we as we learn of you, Father, we we fall in love with you, God, and and more and more. And I and I pray that God, that that would be the, the, the heart of each and every person, Lord, that as we hear your word, Father, and understand your will and purpose, God, that God, that we would surrender ourselves to be used by you, Father. We lift up Sister Janie and her family to you, God. Um, Lord, I just pray that for your strength, God, for your peace, God, over them and Felicia and her family, God. Uh, just pray that, God, that you would continue, Father, to, to quicken them, uh, to reveal yourself to them, that your peace and presence, Holy Spirit, would be with them and in them and through them, uh, building them up, God, strengthening them, God, through, this, uh, through the journey, Father, that is ahead. We thank you, Father, for uh, this job, Father, for, for Charlie and his son, Father. We just we give you all the praise, God. We just thank you, Father, because we know that, God, that it is, it's you that is uh, directing our steps, God. You're the one that's ordering our steps. And I pray that, God, that you would continue to do so, that you would continue to open doors of opportunity, Father, before them, God, as they look unto you and put you first, Father. Tonight, we just, uh, we just pray for each and every person, Father, that will be ministering in this house tonight. I pray that, God, that your anointing would be upon them, would be upon the word that they speak, would be upon the hearts of the, those that hear, God. And, and once again, may we not just be hearers, but may we be doers of the word, Father, putting into practice the things that you have taught us, God. Um, we just pray, Father, for your anointing tonight over your word, God. Be glorified in each and every one of us. Uh, may you receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you for being here. Let somebody know that you're glad to see them tonight. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is at work in us and, and how that God uses us as, as we surrender ourselves to Him. Um, in Romans chapter 10 and 17, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then again, in Romans 14 and 23, it says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, we want to we want to make sure that we're hearing the word of God. And, and as the Bible teaches us that the things that we hear, we mix with faith. Because the Bible says that at some point there were those that heard the word of God, but it wasn't mixed with faith, and so it didn't do them any good. But as we hear the word of God, we pray that, that, that God, that it would be mixed with faith, um, because whatever whatsoever is not of faith is sin. We want to be able to hear the word of God and be obedient to the things that he said, said to us. Um, now, these things that God speaks to us, these, these uh, mes messages and things that we've been going over, um, the Word of God is what produces faith in us. Uh, it is faith that is not misplaced, but faith that is in God, that is in His Word. If He said it, He means it. And He's going to perform it. He'll do it according to His will. And that's one thing that we've been talking about, that everything that we do, whatever we pray, we pray according to the will of God. Now, when God gave us the Holy Spirit, uh, and I make this statement, and it's not a light statement, but when God gave us the Holy Spirit, He gave us everything. Everything that you and I are going to need, we can find in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as we surrender ourselves um, to the leading of His Spirit, faith can be restored um, by the Holy Spirit. There's, there's so much that the Spirit of God wants to teach us and things, uh, places that He wants to lead us, but we have to be surrendered to the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 24, we're going to get into this. He is the Spirit of power. The Spirit of power. In Luke chapter 24, starting with verse 47. 
See, God is going to do something. God wants to move in this earth. God wants to move in us. And as we've said already in previous lessons, God wants to do it through you and me. There's a vessel that has to be obtained uh, and used. Uh, Luke 24, starting with verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, and we're going to come back to this a little bit later, he says this, he says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. One thing that, that we have to understand. Now this is something that we can't be ignorant about because we can, we can get to a place where we're just like, well that's, that's not what I'm after. Um, but man's instinct, man's desire, his, his whole drive is for power. Man wants power. It's an aid in him to have power. And this is something, that, again, that you and I have to understand. He wants power, and it's the strongest thing in him. The strongest desire that a man has in his heart. And I'm talking about man in, in, in the generic term, it, it, meaning man or woman, is to want power. What was one of the things that the Bible says that, that uh, woman, the, the woman would struggle with? is to be in submission or subjection to her husband. It, there was Because there's that desire for power. See, this, this power is an attribute of God, and, and it's the attribute that's most coveted by man. They want power. You think about this, in the beginning, Satan wanted what? He wanted power. The Bible says that he wanted to be like the Most High, that he was going to take the position or the authority or the power of the Most High. That was his whole agenda, was to ascend above God, to become greater than God. And in his, in his desire, this, this desire that he had overwhelmingly in him, that as he reached for that power, he fell. You see... In Genesis 3 and 5, Satan's lie to, 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 to man was this. Um, you shall be as God. See, what man failed to understand was he was created in the image of God. So Satan comes in and he tries to deceive man. He deceives he deceives him, he lies to him and says, the only reason that God doesn't want you to eat of that tree is because in the day that you eat of it, you will be like God. You'll have power, you'll have wisdom, you'll have understanding. There are things that God is trying to keep from you. But in the day that you eat of it, you'll be like God. Think about it. God is the one that created all of these things. God is the one that ordained you and gave you dominion. God is the one that did all of the... Wouldn't it be something to be like God? But again, what Adam didn't realize was he was already created in the image of God. So this was the appeal. And this was what prevailed in the garden. Adam's, Adam reached again for that power. And what happened is, as he desired that power, he was dri driven out of the presence of God. You see, man was, was created, if you will, for dominion. He was created for power. He was created for authority. And he knew it. Because this is, a, this is what God told him from the very beginning. But as he reached for it outside of the boundaries of God, he fell. And we see this. This is something that we see all, all along in the human race and in our world today. Is those that are reaching for power. In Romans chapter 5, in verse 19, it says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, 
shall many be made righteous. Now, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. See, man, in the fall, he lost everything that was given to him by God. What he didn't realize is he already had everything he needed. See, sometimes I think even as believers, we forget what we already have. And Satan likes to come in and, and, and try to lie to us. And, and, and this is why it's so important to stay with the Word of God. And that's why the Bible tells us don't compare ourselves one with another. But you start looking around and seeing what other people have. And you start getting jealous because you want more than what you already have. You don't realize how blessed you already are. You don't realize that God has already endued or endowed you with power. See, after the fall, the instinct for power remained. Even after Adam fell, he continued to desire more of this power. It was almost as if there, it, it, it almost became even, even more so enticing. Something that drove him because he knew what he had once had, but now he had lost it and he wanted more of it. See, power is the dominant passion of the human race. And it's seen all through history if we're, if we're, if we're keen and keeping our eyes. The kingdoms of this world are built on the love for power. Think about that. Men wanting power. Always wanting more. This has been the key all through the ages. Men have rose up to dominate the rest of, of mankind in their quest for power. It's as if they didn't have enough. And they always wanted more. You see, Bab Babylon in the Bible, it stands as a symbol of human ambition. In Genesis chapter 11, and you can turn there. I want you to see what... You see, because we, we think of the Tower of Babel and... And why did God come and confuse the languages? Why did God come and stop, put a stop uh, to what they were doing or what they were trying to accomplish because they weren't doing it under the will of God or the purpose of God, but they were doing it for their own good. And so in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 4, it says this, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top reaches unto heaven and let us make us a name. Boy, I mean, if this isn't the most selfish verse you've heard, I, 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 let us make us a name. Least we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. Let us build us a city and a tower. Let us make us a name. I mean, I mean it was all about them. Be careful if you think you and I are any different. See, outside of God, it would, be, it would be all about us. Before you came to know Jesus Christ, it was all about you. When you get in trouble, it's because of you many times. Well, I just don't feel like I'm getting what I deserve. I, 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 feel, like, I feel like I'm not being treated the way that I should be treated. And it's very easy to get in that self centered mindset to only think about me and this is exactly what they were doing but they were acting according to their nature according to the human nature they were just doing what they wanted to do so the tower of babel was to reach unto heaven and what it was to do and the reason they wanted it to reach unto heaven because they were wanting to make a name for themselves. Let us, let, let us, they said, go and build us a city and a tower. At least we be scattered. Let us make us a name. They were trying to make a name for themselves. I mean, everybody wants to put their, put, put their name on something. I mean, somebody's doing what you're doing. Well, anything you can do, I can do better. You may not say it, but the connotation is there. You're always trying to outdo. See, most of the work of man has been just right along this very line. Let us make a, a, let us, make us a name. It, it's all about self. For ourselves, it's the quest for power. 
for dominance. See, Babylon's not just a geographical term, but it's also a spiritual term. It's a spirit that is still with us today. Oh, you think that it's no, no, it's it's still here today. Fix this in your mind as we continue to go through this 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 time. Satan, Satan wants you to be self-centered. He wants you to be number one. After all, that's what it's all about, right? Um, working for number one. Who's that? Should be God. But too often, it's us. It's about me. It's about my name. It's about me leaving a legacy. What about if we just do things for Christ and even if we're forgotten in the end? As long as Christ receives the glory. What do you think a lot of Christianity is built on today? That's why they have to put their name on the side of the building. Because it's not about Christ. It's look what we have done. Look what we have accomplished in our own strength and in our own wits and our own might and our own understanding. It's, it's me. It's me. It's us. See, God made man for sovereignty. God made man to be sovereign. But in order to be sovereign, he must have power. He has to have power to accomplish what he sets out to do. Let me give you an example. We have what we call sovereign nations. You know how they remain sovereign? By power. See, you can't be sovereign unless you have enough power to back it up. This is where the term comes, peace through strength. It's been said for many, many years that as long as America was strong, she could reign in peace. And there would be peace on earth as long as America would remain strong and stand strong. We didn't have to flex our muscles. We didn't have to do anything. As long as the people saw America as a strength, then the rest of the the countries, the rest of the world would, would, would... be at peace, there there might be an uprising here and there, but there was somebody that had enough power to put whatever nation in place so that we could have peace. That was the whole key behind it. Strength through, through peace. I mean, peace through strength. Peace through power. And so... So power is something that all of the nations seek after. But, but now that America is being seen as a weak nation, all of a sudden, everybody else is now reaching for the power. And it's a race for power. Who can get it first? Who can dominate? You think that the world leaders, uh, if they get, see the opportunity, which I, I think they see, Um, You think that they're going to waste a moment to reach for it? Of course they're going to be strategic in it, but it's a whole meaning, their whole understanding, their whole desire is for power. Now, Now, the wrong use of power, the wrong use of power, the power, power put in the wrong hands is a dangerous thing. We've seen it through, through history. We've seen what Hitler was able to do. When power was placed in the wrong hands. Genghis Khan. When power was placed in the wrong hands. Alexander the Great. When power was placed in the wrong hands. So the wrong use of power. It doesn't negate the fact. That God. Is going to do or accomplish his will and his work. The fulfillment of of the purpose of God. Um, And the way that the only way that you and I are going to be able to accomplish what God has called us to do is we must have power. You see, but this isn't a a power of selfishness. Look at it again in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I told you we were coming back to it. Jesus says this: you shall receive power. Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
and you shall be witnesses of me. You see, even as believers, there has to be power. You see, some people say, well, why do I need the Holy Spirit? Because you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. See, some people are bound. Do you know why they're bound? Because they're bound because there's a stronger man that is in control of them. They can't break free from addictions because there is a stronghold upon them. And the only way to free them is they need somebody greater. And Jesus gives this. He says, unless a stronger man comes in and overtakes the strong man of the house. You see, and the same thing for you and I, because there are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that are out there. And so people say, well, why do I need the power of the Holy Ghost? Why do I need the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Because Jesus said, when you are filled or baptized with the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Power to live in freedom. See, because the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is there's liberty, there's freedom. And again, freedom, why? Because there's power. He sets us free from the power of sin and death. He sets us free from the power of the enemy. He sets us free from the power of desires and the things that, would, that, that you were once bound to, you are no longer bound to because of the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you, that is upon you. And now he says, I'm going to, I'm going to endue you with power when the Holy Ghost comes on you so that you can be a witness of me. In other words, a representative of of me and so that you can set the captives free. If you think that you're going to set captives free and not be filled with the Spirit of God and power, uh, then, then you've, you're mistaken. You've got, a, you've got another thing coming. We as believers, we need the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. This isn't some selfish control of power. This is power to do the, the, the will of God, what He has called us to do. And we cannot do what He's called us to do without the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, now I, I've said it before, that there are some churches out there that the Spirit of God that the, it could be taken out of that place and they, they continue on as if nothing has happened. Why? Because they didn't build it by the Spirit of God and the power of God. It's a very dangerous thing when we build things by our own wits and by our own understanding, by our own wisdom, in our own strength, in our own abilities. See, we are, we are, we are called of God to take dominion over those things outside of the will of God. See, Satan has, Satan has run his kingdom and he's done everything that he, that he has wanted to do. But when God empowers us, the Bible says Jesus was anointed, filled with the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good, setting captives free, healing the sick. And, and you and I are called to do the same thing. See, things that are out of place, outside of the will of God, we are called to be filled with the Holy Spirit to bring those things back in line. The only reason that the devil hasn't completely taken over this, this planet is because there are still believers in this world that are praying, that are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God we don't have to be equal in numbers, praise God. But there has to be some of us. And we have to go and we have to be obedient and we have to do what God has called us to do. And the only way we can do it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work in us. So we're called to bring those things back into line. And the only way that we can do this is we must have power. Look at Luke chapter 10. I want you to see this because this makes it a, a little bit more clear, if you will. We need power. See, Adam lost it. Adam lost that power and that authority when he gave way to Satan and surrendered under that, un, under that lie. He was, he was as if he was relieved of his duties. You and I, we don't understand. It is, it is imperative that we live a holy life. It is imperative because, because without 
without holiness, my brother was reminding me even of that this, this afternoon, without holiness, um, we're not going to see God. I can tell you this, God's not going to release that power just to anyone. But look what happens in Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, words of Christ, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, don't let the power get to your head. But understand you've been endued with power for a purpose, for a reason. Rejoice in this, that your name is written in heaven. Rejoice in this, that you belong to God, that you and I are the children of God. But I, but I love this, that 70 came back, they were, they were astonished at the fact that they had this kind of authority, that they recognized that even the devils were subject to them only under and through the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus reminds them, the only reason that those devils are subject is because I have given you something that belongs to me. And this was, this was the promise and the fulfillment of Pentecost. This is the promise and the fulfillment of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That we would receive power. Now I've said this before and, I, and I'm going to say it again because again we put the emphasis on speaking in tongues. Almost as if, if I, could, if I could teach them how to speak in tongues, then they would have the power, but that's not how it works. No, we wait and we surrender to the will of God. We pray for, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And when He comes, we'll speak in tongues. But I don't want to... I don't want to be fooled and I don't want to fool anybody else just that if, if I can teach you how to do something, then, then all of a sudden you have power and, and, and then one day you stand up against the enemy and the enemy will be willing and ready to challenge you. And Many have come to that place because they truly, somebody taught them or made them think that, that, that this is the way to have power, that if you, can just, if you can just say these few syllables, then all of a sudden you have power. No, that's not how it works. And then, and then they met the enemy on his own territory and were defeated. No, but the Bible says that when you are baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Don't worry, that manifestation will be there. Again, in Matthew chapter 28, following along these same lines, Jesus, Jesus is, is thrilled to reveal these things to the disciples. Why? Because something has been, something has been done through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now God can come and live in you and me because the blood of Jesus has been applied and Jesus says in verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. These are the, these are the mighty words of, of Jesus Christ. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. In other words, don't go until you've received the power. Even, that's what He told them even in Acts. He says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to do what? To observe. To observe all things. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Now, he's saying to them, All power is given unto me. I have the authority to give it unto you so that you can now go and do everything that you have observed of me. 
And to observe what Jesus is speaking about is not just to look upon and see, but to actually follow through, make it a lifestyle to be living that life before God. As Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. In other words, do what I do. Say what I say. Follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. He said, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. See, God destined you and I, man, for a throne. The Bible says that one day we will rule and reign with Jesus Christ in eternity. But what God has given us is power even here to rule and to reign with Him. To take power over all the power of Satan. See, Satan promises him a kingdom. If you remember... Jesus comes and Satan says, I'll give you everything that your eyes can see. Takes him up to the pinnacle if you'll do one thing. If you'll bow before me. In that moment, Satan, Satan promises a kingdom without a cross. Why do you think Satan... What, Satan hasn't changed his, his tactics. There are many people in the world today, and, and, and you know... He's, they're in Hollywood, they're everywhere else, but, but sadly enough, some of them have made their way, as Jude said, it has wormed their way into the church. But Satan promises a, a crown without a cross. You can have all of this, and, and you don't even have to work for it, you don't have to suffer for it, you don't have to do anything, all you have to do is bow before me. And it sounds so enticing but what, but what they don't understand is the price tag comes at the end. And it'll have to be paid. The difference between God's purpose and Satan's promises. The difference is between the method and the purpose. Satan wants the power for himself. Satan's purpose is selfish. See, the kingdoms are not the same. And neither the way to get there the same. Satan doesn't care which way you come. There are many ways. You can call him whatever you want him. He goes by, by, by any name that you want to put on him. You can put on him Buddha, Allah, Hali Krishna. You can put on him any other name. He doesn't mind as long as you come to him. The Bible says that there's one way, one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. God's way is a way of grace. Satan's way is selfishness and lawlessness. Now, grace is that empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As we've said oftentimes that, that, that when Paul was under, he was under that uh, messenger of Satan. And he says, I prayed three times and God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. In other words, when you surrender to me, then you will see my power at work in you. Satan says, have it your way, however you want it. You don't have to, you don't have to surrender to God, but what, what you, you'll have to surrender to him, but he doesn't make it seem like that. Right up front. It's lawlessness. It's selfishness. Whatever you want. The flesh operates in this realm. See, for the flesh, the, the flesh desires the things of this world. The flesh wants things for itself. And the flesh is the body of Satan. The flesh is, is, is that, that, that desire that wants whatever it wants, whenever it wants. And Satan is willing to give you that. See, we... I believe it was last week we closed out with this, that, that God has to have a vessel through which He can move. God has to have a vessel. The church is that vessel. The church is the body of Christ. See, Christ will manifest Himself through the church. As we've said, the, the, the body, the church, is the vehicle 
of expression. In other words, it is the, the church is how God expresses Himself to the world. Through you and me. We are the hands, we are the feet of God. Paul says it this way, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. For me to live is for Christ to live. But see, the same is true of Satan. He has to have a vessel through which he can manifest himself so that he can complete his work, so that he can accomplish his purpose, and the flesh is that vessel. When you surrender to the carnal man, you're surrendering to the devil himself. See, that's why the Bible says that it is impossible to please God uh, without faith. It's impossible for the flesh, for the carnal man, to be pleasing to God because the flesh is that vehicle through which Satan operates or works, to, whether it be you or me. doesn't mean that we have to be possessed. Don't you remember? The, the flesh is what Satan desires. Here Peter is, and Jesus says to Peter, he says, he says to him in one sentence, Who do men say that I am? And Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, uh, upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell, he wasn't saying upon Peter. That's, he wasn't saying upon you, Peter, I'm going to build my... No, he was saying, upon this understanding that I am the Son of God, that I am God Himself, God in the flesh. This is what he was saying. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he says, I give you the keys, Peter, meaning to the, to the entire, anybody who, whosoever will, who's a part of the body of Christ, I give you keys. I give you the keys. So in one sentence he's saying this, and then he tells them, now I have to go. And Peter says, oh no, far, far be it from you. And he says, Depart, he says, get behind me, Satan. Why? Because in, in one moment, Peter is being used and, and, and he understands the things of God, but then he reverts back to his selfish nature. I don't want you to leave Christ. And, and almost in a sense that trying to convince him not to die, not to go, not to fulfill the purpose or the will of God. And he says, that's the nature of Satan. Doesn't mean that Peter was, Peter was possessed by the devil. It doesn't mean... But, but he was reverting back to his will and not God's will. See, we need to be very careful to walk in the Spirit. We need to be very careful to be filled with the Spirit. I can tell you this. I think all of us have experienced it at, time, at some time or another if we're not careful. Where we want our will more than we want the will of God. See, I think we all have to have a reality check here and there. And I, and I believe that God allows us because what happens if we're not careful, we take our eyes off of Jesus and we put it on the world and we put it on other things and then we become selfish. And then it becomes about me and about me. And, and, and sometimes we just need to be shaken and realize that, that no, um, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. It isn't about me. It's about Him. It's about His will being done. I pray that God would use this life, that God would have a vessel that he can operate through see when you when you when the spirit of selfishness is operating in the realm of christianity what you understand is that is this satan has found a foothold you see when when you see selfishness operating in 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 the body of christ then satan has found a foothold he's found a place where he can move um the place where God should live and only God, all of a sudden, Satan is looking for those opportunities. As we said, Satan, can't, Satan knows that he can't defeat the body of Christ outright in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a battle facing us. So what he does is he tries to find his way, a way into the church through somebody, through someone, through a Judas, through a selfish ambition, through selfish motive. And then he begins to work from that point. He's found a foothold. See, when you see that spirit of selfishness, what it is is the spirit of lawlessness. And you know that Satan's at work. If we're not careful, it can happen in our homes, in our families. See, God's way is the way of grace that when we humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, then God moves. When we surrender our lives and we realize that apart from Jesus Christ, I can do 
nothing. See, I, I watch out for self. It's that simple. We can say, well, I don't need God to do this. That's self. No, I need God for everything that I do. I need God from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. And I can tell you this, even in my sleep I need God. Because how many of us have experienced the enemy coming to us even in our sleep? And we've called upon the name of the Lord even in our sleep. Why? Because this is deeper than consciousness. It's the Spirit of the living God that lives in me. I need Him every moment of my life. And so therefore, as I surrender under the mighty hand of God, I can do what I cannot do in my own ability. Sure, I may be able to accomplish certain things by the flesh, but I will not choose to do that without the Spirit of God leading me. Because if I, if I, if I do it without the Spirit of God leading me, then, then I, can, I can get in trouble. And, and that's what ha- happens a lot of times. Somebody, they, we want, we want to, to do something for God. And you don't pray about it. You don't seek God's will on it. And then after you have accomplished it, and realize, now, now God, you need to bless it. Well, God's, God does, God's not obligated to, to bless something that you have done. This is why it's so important to be led by the Spirit at all times. Satan's way is, is lawlessness. When every man does what's right in his own eyes. When everybody wants to do what they want to do and, and they want their will. You know, I, I, I've read through some of the history of our nation. And in the old Congress, um, they used to pray before they'd start their session. And it wasn't just, can somebody pray? And somebody would stand up and give an opening prayer. No, they would, they would turn And they would get down on their knees. And then they would begin to pray and cry out to God. And these sessions would take sometimes hours as they were praying for God's guidance and for God's leading. Because they knew that the decisions that they were about to make were going to affect an entire nation and ultimately the world itself. And these were men and women that prayed and cried out for guidance and leading. Oh, sure, they could have done what Congress does today and have their little prayer meeting, and they don't even call it that anymore if they even have it. Look at the mess that we're in tonight. But these were men of God that were led by God and surrendered under the mighty hand of God. See, See, God brings it as a gift. And man has to wait on God. But but the flesh doesn't want to wait. But as we wait on God in patience, and here's here's a a, a word that's difficult for, for most of the world, patience and obedience to the Word of God. Most of the church world doesn't even know what obedience is anymore. But obedience to the Word of God. But Satan, what he does is he says, if you want it, take it. Isn't that what it is today? That's what Satan does. If you want it, take it. Demand it. Snatch it. It's yours. It's yours for the taking. This is... This, this is always the difference. Through God, it's surrender. In God, it's patience. In God, it's obedience. And your flesh doesn't want to wait in patience. It doesn't want to be obedient. But Satan says, you don't have to. If it feels good, do it. And, and, and then the church catches on to this and says, well, we don't, want to, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, so we're not going to preach the truth. And so every man does what's right in his own eyes. If you feel that that's the way and God has blessed it, oh, then just keep doing it. No, I can tell you that. That's sin. That's not obedience. And you can watch it. You can see it. Satan's way is very subtle at times. He he doesn't always, all out, all in your face. No, he little by little, oh, you can have your way. A little here and a little there isn't going to hurt anything. Oh, you can handle it. 
See, that's the way Satan does. Oh, don't worry about it. You can, you can pray about it later. You can ask forgiveness later. Just a little bit isn't going to hurt you. And the next thing you know, he's got you in his web. And his tentacles are wrapped all around you. See, God's way is this. The old man has to die. That the new man can live. It's not a refurbishing of the old man. No, the old man has to die that the new man may live. God isn't going to work with selfishness and lawlessness and put up with those things. Those things must come under the authority of Jesus Christ and must come under His surrender. See, it comes as a gift and God said we have to wait with patience upon it. But again, Satan says, if you want it, take it. It's yours. See, the devil's doctrine has always been that its might is is right. If you have the power, then take it from whoever. It, It is the survival of the fittest, they say. No authority must stand between you and your own will. Animal instinct and gratification and desires are or those are to be fulfilled. That's enough justification for man to take it. Is is as long as as you feel good. It doesn't matter who you hurt in the process. It's yours. That's what Satan says. You want it? Take it. You see what's in our streets. Sadly enough, you see it in the churches. You see it everywhere. Satan's way to the throne and dominion is by assertion of self. Oh, he disguises it in self-realization. Oh, I came to realize. I had an epiphany. Uh, an epiphany. Oh, it comes through the prosperity gospel. It's yours. It's, it, was, it, was, it was for you. It's a better life. Oh, it's so subtle. It's a stepping stone. It's one thing after another, and, and, and it becomes almost as a, a ladder of, of sorts. Man climbs his way up and through to fulfill his own selfish desires. That, that it's a gospel that tells you that God, has, God wants you to have happiness and peace and joy and everything here and now. You don't have to surrender. You don't have to obey God. You can live however you want because every man does what's right in his own eyes. As long as you buy fire insurance, right? That's what most people come to to know Christianity as. As long as I don't go to hell in the end. This is the way of selfishness. And sadly enough, it's, it's seeped into the ranks of the body of Christ. When you see this, you know that this is not the Holy Spirit. See, God's way is surrender of self on the the altar of sacrifice. God's way is Calvary. It has to be crucified. The old man has to die. Man objects to the way of the cross, but Calvary is God's way. We don't want to die. We don't want to surrender to the things of God. Oh, you say, well, well, I don't mind. Well, let me ask you something. How hard is it to pray? That's God's way. And then, and then we, 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 we ask questions like this that reveal something deeper in the heart. Well, how long do I have to pray? As if I is as if if I at least do the work, how much do I have to do to obtain the prize? You've already lost it because you've never had it. It's hard to pray, it's difficult to pray. God's way is study the word, show yourself approved. Well, well, how long do I have to study the word? And, and, and what it is, it's, it's revealing something that's deeper within the heart. 
In other words, I haven't surrendered to God. Don't you remember? Or, or, or I pray that there was a, a moment in, in our lives that when we couldn't wait to pray. Oh, and then, and then you couldn't pull me out of prayer. And then, and, then, and then we wanted to read the Bible and we wanted to read the Word of God. We wanted to know more about Him and, and we wanted to see what He had for us and what the promises of God were and what the Word of God was, was revealing to us. And we wanted to learn about Him. And now it's like, do I have to? And, and sadly enough, most people don't even open their Bibles throughout the week. See, it's... It's surrendering of self, the sacrificing of self on the altar. Calvary is God's way. And we fight against this. That's why Paul says, offer your body as a living sacrifice. And a living sacrifice is much more difficult than a dead one. Because a dead one, you can throw it up on the altar and it's going to stay there. But a living sacrifice wants to continually get up from the altar. He wants to continually do his own will. And it's a continual struggle. And the Bible says the flesh and the spirit are at war with one another. And the one that wins will be determined by the one that you feed. In God's plan, the mark of distinction is humility. And the right to rule is the power to obey. You see, but... What we don't realize is the only way that we can be in authority is when we are under authority. See, the only way the disciples could have the power over all the power of the devil was as they submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ. Nothing has changed. We want the power, but we don't want to submit to the authority of Jesus Christ. See, God's way gets us there. Satan's way ends in death. The leadership of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of everything, the purpose of God, the promise of God in your life and mine. We either learn how to, to be led by the Spirit of God, or um, I know we don't like to think about this, but the process eliminates us. You see, we, we're, we, we come under His authority, under His, uh, in subjection to Him, or else we're eliminated. We're pushed out by the process. I, I know that that's a hard thing to understand, or a hard thing to, to want to receive. But man's quest is for power. God says, I've, I, I'll give you power the right way. And I'll give you power over all the power of the devil. This is not a selfish power. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to sacrifice self in the process in order to obtain this type of power and this kind of power. But it's a power that brings life. It's a power that brings peace. It's a power that brings purpose to us and in our lives. It's a surrendering to the power of the Holy Spirit. Surrendering to the Word of God. Being obedient to Jesus Christ. I pray that God's Word would come alive in us. The only way that that happens is as the Spirit of God makes it a living Word in us. I pray that we would learn to surrender to the authority of of the Holy Spirit and to receive His power. Amen. Father, tonight we come before You an open possibility unto You, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that Your power would be evident in us. Lord, there's a, there's a lot that we have to deal with. For we understand that the carnal man desires his own way, his own purpose. He desires to do the things that he wants to do, God. And this is a struggle that we are constantly facing. But Holy Spirit, I pray that as we surrender unto you, as we do it your way, 
that You would empower us. And in doing so, God, that You would set us free from the power of Satan. You would set us free from the power of sin. That God, that we would, we would be freed from the lies of Satan, the lies of the enemy himself. That God, I, I know, Father, that he is, he's, he's a liar. He's the father of it. But God, many have believed it. And have been bound by it. But I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would, you would become that spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, setting your people free. That God, that we can go and do likewise. That we can move under your authority, under your anointing. And that we can speak your word. And that it would not be our words, but it would be your word. And that, Lord, that, that as your spirit moves, God, we would see the captives set free. I pray that, God, that your power would rest upon each and every person that's in this place. And, Holy Spirit, that you would move in our lives. That we would surrender totally, wholly, and completely unto you, God. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. To you be all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. And amen. Praise God. To God be all the glory. Amen. Well. Thank you for being with us tonight. I pray that. I pray that the word of God would. Would find its place in your heart. And that you would apply these things. The, the things that, that he speaks to us. Um, and see the fruit of it. Uh, operating in and through you. But I love you and God bless you. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Mm-hmm.